but especially the poor and the vulnerable. Bishop Donnelly, my name is John Schoonmaker, as you know, and with all respect, Bishop Donnelly, I ask, where is the social justice for the victims of sexual abuse by priests? John, I want to uh, respond briefly to that uh, question, I guess. I do want to say that we are well along the journey of, uh, of uh, responding dramatically, transparently, and justly to allegations, and even all. If you want to continue the conversation, John, I'll do so afterwards, but uh, I'd like to ask another question. Bishop Donovan? Yes. My name is Claudia. And, sure, um, Claudia. I, I'm not as eloquent as some. In fact, as I'm standing here listening to you talk, I die a thousand deaths and stand up. But I want you to know that while, and please don't take my tears this week, but while you may be in compliance on paper, there are people in this community that are hurting and that this is not an area that social justice has prevailed. And we need to be not thrown off the church property when we come to give you a letter. We need to be engaging in a dialogue looking for solutions. Claudia, I would uh, indeed uh, welcome some way to dialogue, but I'm not sure that this is the place or this is the time for us to uh, say other than we are in compliance. That is to say we do the best we can. We have laymen and women in different groups even appointed to sort of look at our weaknesses and faults to tell us that we are doing what we've been asked to do, we have done it well. That doesn't mean we're perfect at it, we could have made mistakes, but we're working on it. Right off the top of my head, I don't think bishops are accountable enough to people. Um, you know, they're appointed as a bishop, the priest council is their own council, it's not like a legislative body or anything. Uh, they're not evaluated by the parishioners. Well, part of, it, part of it goes back to other um, situations in this diocese that uh, where I believe the administration of this diocese was protecting and covering for and enabling people who I call faith molesters. And did you have any um, priests who counseled you or met with you, suggested that that would be a good vocation for you? No. Who were they? Well, a priest at Central through the years. Uh... Bob Donnelly, the auxiliary bishop today. I know that Dennis Gray served with Robert Donnelly, under Robert Donnelly, because I did my deacon internship with Father, he was then Father Robert Donnelly. It's 1979, Dennis Gray was just being moved. And I know that, you know, they were close. Did you talk to Donnelly about wanting to move to Toledo? Who, Bishop Donnelly? Yeah. Sure. And what did you say uh, to him? Objection. Privileged communication. He wasn't the bishop at the answer. time, was he? He was a bishop. What kind of bishop? Auxiliary bishop. Where, where did he uh, stand in the, in the bishop chain of command? In number two. Okay. Did he have authority over you? Sure. I think Bishop Hoffman, Bishop Donnelly, knew about these accusations on him, and probably to protect his career or remain silent and allow this man to be around children. Uh, I think any of these bishops like this who, uh, who, re who place, or I I'd say across the country, who place these molesters, especially these serial molesters, around kids should resign. They have no business being bishops. You know, if they play with lies like that. Okay, so I'm wondering if between the two of you, if that's come up. Well, we were going out with his family. family for a surprise birthday party the other night, and we hadn't been out together since, since the we talk, okay. issue. And then Tony started talking about the whole church situation, and I think what made it worse was that your brother was going to a church function, so that put Tony in a whole different universe. I was freaking out, so I said uh, to her across the table, hey, can you come on over and sit on this side just for a minute, you know, until things get going and rub my back for a second. Now, I just sat down. I've had a long week. All yeah. I want to do is have a drink yeah. and talk to I, I didn't 
get shitty, I don't think. I think Not at I, that point. I think I just said, you know. He's totally, if he happens to be feeling a certain way or feeling tight, everything that is possibly going on with me is just <laughs> too bad. You, Suck you, it up. You turn invisible. I'm somehow. tight, so the world well, ends. Wait a second. I really wish that Tony could take all the stuff that's turning into anger and do something different with that. Help people in the Catholic Church or, you know, parents or whatever change, group. Change canon yes. law, leave the church. If he anyway. could do something different with that, rather than get angry and pissed off. Good. And, and I, I, I might not be Tony. doing it the way it, you would, but this is the way that I think it's going to work for me in order to get through it. And uh, I am what I am. Guess where I am? That's the arch at St. Louis. Hey, Barbara. Um, Tony Combs. Yes. Apparently, Claudia already has a name tag for me. She has everything for you. Welcome, everyone, to the first National Assembly of SNAP, the Survivors Network for those of you by peace. Now, we are going to hear from our National Executive Director, David Clossy. Welcome. Welcome to my town. Uh, we're here this weekend for one simple reason. And that is to gain the strength and the skills to go out and keep doing what we've been doing, many of us, for years and years, which is to save lives. Um, I'm going to ask just a couple people to break the ice. And uh, if you feel comfortable sharing some of what you shared this afternoon, please head up to either one of the microphones. Good evening. I'm from Tucson, Arizona. I was raped by a priest when I was 11 years old. Up until that time, I had 100% clarity that God's plan for me was to be a priest. That plan changed. Because the closest thing I had to God was that priest that held me down by the back of the neck and stuck his penis in my butt. This is me as a teenager at the age when I was abused by the bishops, director of youth ministry for the Diocese of Toledo. I remember vividly on this youth trip, he stopped at a hotel and checked in with a fake name and turned to me and said, I can't believe I would almost give my real name. And being naive, like this person in the picture, I thought, well, why wouldn't you? If something happened, how would they know where we're at? My first sexual assaults by priests started when I was somewhere between five and six. Fast forward uh, to 21, 22. And like many of us, uh, I was confided in a priest uh, who then immediately began an affair with me. My father himself was a pedophile, so he started around the age of two to approximately the age of six, and then I met Father Gagan, who went from six to roughly 10. Uh, so it was kind of like natural for me. I was just nine years old when Father Jim worked very slowly and methodically to gain my trust and confidence and silence. Through the course of it, French kissing, forced masturbation, oral rape became the traumas that I experienced, but experienced alone. My name is Tony Combs. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. I'm a 34-year-old father of two. I'm a Toledo firefighter. I was abused repeatedly. I allowed myself to continue to be abused. I regret the most that I've always been
over. 